let's look at some real basic statistics. So this is some of the stuff that maybe you learned in junior high, uh, maybe some other classes you did some of this real basic stuff. So uh, the heart of statistics is being able to draw conclusions from data. Um, the idea is you got to make some decision and you can kind of do what uh, seems like a good idea you know off the top of your mind but if there's some data that could help you make a better decision then um, it would be nice to have techniques for taking that data and organizing it and knowing what the data is telling you so that you can make the best decision possible and so the first part of statistics they call it descriptive statistics and it's the techniques that you use to organize and describe data. So let's say this is a, a data set. This is a, I took a sample of 30 households. I asked them how many TVs they had, and this is my data. So this is the number of TVs that each household had. So to organize a data set, and now this one's small enough, I could kind of look at it and see what's going on, but you can have data sets with thousands of values, and it could be pages and pages of numbers. Okay, so what you do to organize a data set is you, you put them together in something they call a frequency distribution. And the idea here, like for this example, and this is a very simple, straightforward example, is I'm going to take number of TVs, and these are the possible values here. So these go from 0 to 7. 0 is the min, 7 is the max, and so I'm going to put those in here. And these are known as the classes. So it looks like I have eight different possible classes. And this column here is going to be the frequency. The frequency is the number of observations in your sample that lie in each of these classes. So zero, there's only one. So this would be one. For one, I got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I got eight for one. Now for two, let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, I think I missed that, twelve. So I got twelve, and then for three, one, two, three, four, five. So there would be five here. Four TVs, let's see, I got one, two, three, there's three. And then I don't see any for five, and I don't see any for six. And then there's the one that has seven TVs. Okay, and so this is a frequency distribution table. It shows how the data is distributed over the possible values of the variable. And what they say is you should always add up the frequencies to make sure you didn't miss any values. So let me add these up. We got 20 another 10 and so this adds up to 30 and that's what I should have 30 households this is the number of households for each of these and so these should total up to 30 households and so this adding these up is kind of a check to see if I'm, I've gotten the right answer or see to make sure I haven't missed any observations here so okay so now what I can do is I can draw what they call a histogram that gives me a picture of the data and along this axis, I'm going to put the number of TVs. So maybe 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then these, this is going to be the frequency. Okay, so this needs to go up at least to 12. So maybe I'll do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And so 0 goes up to 1 TV, so I'm going to put a bar there above 0, centered at 0 for 1 TV. 1 is going to go up to 8 TVs. The 2 goes up to 12 TVs. And then the 3 goes back down to 5 TVs. The 4 is going to go down to 3 TVs. There's no 5, no 6, and then the 7 is 1 TV again. 
So then kind of shade in the bar. So now the height of each bar tells you how much data is in each class. So the higher the bar, the more data there is at that point in the distribution. Um, so they always, uh, when you make a table, you should have a title that helps someone interpret the graph. So I might say something like number of TVs for sample of 30 households. And then this would be number of TVs. And to help them interpret, this would actually be number of households. So my frequency is how many households are in each of the different categories. So I do number of TVs two, there would be 12 households that have two TVs. Okay. Um, and this is a real nice picture. It takes a little time experience making these, but you can get a real nice visual picture of your data. And in fact, uh, I see some interesting things. This value, that extreme value that's lying out by itself, this is called an outlier. An outlier is a value that is uh, lies outside of the rest of the data. It's like an extreme value. It would be kind of like all of our normal incomes and then Bill Gates would be an outlier and he would be way, way high. He'd be way off to the right and he would skew the data to the right. And so what we would actually say is that this data set, since there's an outlier on the right, we would say that this data set is right skewed. So when I say a data set is right skewed, I mean that's where the outlier is, not where all the data is, right? And so it's this outlier extreme value skewing the results. For example, if we had Bill Gates, if we had all of our incomes and we threw Bill Gates in there, on average we'd be making a billion dollars each. Well, that Bill Gates income is an outlier that skews the mean to the right. It makes the mean way too large, much larger than any of our incomes. And that's the idea. It's important to know if your data set is skewed because that can also skew the results. Okay. Um, so let me talk about just a couple other basic statistics ideas and I'll use this example here. Um, so the, you can find the mean of a, of a data set the mean or the or I should say the average you're normally when you learn it to begin with you call it the average but the mean that's the same thing and what you do is you you take the sum of values in the data set divided by the number of values okay so what you would do here is um, uh, to find the mean here in this case the number of values here there would be 30 okay and to so to find the sum I'll use my calculator and what I could do is I could type in all I could do 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 0 plus 1 but since I've already organized it like this the 1 0 that doesn't add anything right and then there's eight ones and so if I added all those ones that would be 8 and then there's 12 twos, so that gives me 24. If I added all those twos, five threes would give me 15. Three fours would give me 12. No fives, no six, that doesn't give me anything. And then one seven. And so I get 66 over 30. And then what? this ends up being is 2.2 TVs. And so on average a household has 2.2 TVs. Now of course they ha have either like two seat t TVs or five or one or seven, right? A whole number. So this is kind of like you're weighing that and on average it's not quite two TVs, certainly not three TVs, it's a little more than two when you average them all out. Okay, And so that's the idea of the average. You're adding all the values in the data set, dividing by the number of values. And then you also have the idea of, <coughs> uh, excuse me, of probability. Okay, So let's say I want to find the probability that they have two TVs. So the idea here is I'm taking 
each household, maybe a slip of paper, and I'm writing the Joneses. They have one TV, and I'm putting that name in a hat. The Smiths, they have three TVs. The, the Thompsons, they have three TVs. The Krugers, they have no TV. Um, the Stouts have one TV. And I keep putting all these names in a hat. And so the question is, how many names are there in the hat? Right? So there's going to be 30 names in the hat. Okay? And then out of those 30 names, when I draw, what's the chance... Uh, what are the chances that that name that I'm going to draw has two TVs, right? Well, I need to know how many names um, have two TVs. Well, there's 12. 12 of the 30 names in the hat have two TVs, so my top number is 12. And so what I get here is 12 divided by 30 is 0.4. And so you can almost think of that as a percentage. There's a 40% chance that I'm going to draw someone's name that has two TVs. 40%. Um, it's kind of like if half of the names had two TVs, there would be a 50% chance. So not quite half of the names. Out of the 30, 12 of the names had two TVs. And so there's a 40% chance. Or we would simply say the probability is 0.4. So a probability is always between 0 and 1. 0 is impossible, 1 is certain, okay? And then in the middle, 0.5 means you're just it's just as likely to occur as not occur, 50%, 50/50. Um, and the closer you are to 1, the more likely you are, the closer you are to 0, the less likely you are. So it's kind of like this. 0 to 1 this is your 50-50, this is impossible, this is certain, and then the closer you are to 1 on the scale, the more likely you are until you hit 1 and you're certain. The closer you are to 0 on the scale, the less likely you are until you hit 0 and you become impossible. And so that's the idea behind probability. So a probability is always... Um, uh, the bottom number is always the total number of outcomes that are possible, and then the top number is always the number of outcomes that are in the, the probability you want to find. So if you have a jar with uh, 10 marbles and three of them are white and the rest are black, the probability of drawing a white marble would be 3 over 10. Three out of the 10 marbles are white, and you get a 30% chance. So that's kind of the, the basic idea of probability. So there you go. There's in 12 minutes and 13 minutes kind of the heart of statistics, organizing data and finding measures like the mean that give you the average of the data and then finding the probability of randomly selecting certain observations from a data set. So.